sparkers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, check it out. Check, check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check, check Another it thing out. is stepping through the belly of the beast. I leave the compound and make my way to my stomping ground. I'm just about broke to the letter. It can't get any worse. Shit could only get Yo, welcome back to the Rob Burton Jalonzo Show. I am Rob Burton, a.k.a. at Grown Ass 77 on the gram. The roots are going to come through the curtain. <laughs> it, yo, here we go, man. Yo, and I am Jalonzo, a.k.a. J. Sells on the gram. And you know what I'm saying? And the man in the middle of the man of the hour is the master I see, Mike Geronimo, a.k.a. Whatever, a.k.a. Nigga, that dude. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? This is me starring as myself. He <laughs> said starring as myself. Me starring as myself. You know this is like this is a this is a big moment because you know, as you guys know, I've been leading up to this for a minute, you know, I got an opportunity to, you know, to grow up with with Mike and you know, we spent a lot of time together in the neighborhoods and things of that nature, so we got a chance to reconnect years later. That is the most formal description of, of friendship ever. Yeah. He's like he's never the show I've heard. Like here we go. And this is what I got get ready. opportunity to grow up with Mike. Like like there was a lottery for who yeah. was to grow up. <laughs> His speech and everything changed for the joke. But if you if you haven't noticed he, he cut his beard off. This is how he acts. This is his new corporate. Is this so we are? Well, I guess it's what the fuck. What y'all want to talk about? Y'all already know, man. Shoot. You know what I'm saying? Well, listen, security. Exactly. Y'all yeah, already know these <laughs> How you been, Mike? What's going on with you? I'm chilling. Nah, I'm, I'm good. Everything is cool. What's yeah. going on? Like, yeah, uh, life, man. Yeah, you, you, the one of the things, like you know, when I when I saw you, you looked super relaxed. Like that's like one of the things that that I know, like is important to you. Like, you know, knowing you for the extent of my time and for it's like I know it's like you always like you just like to relax. Like that was your thing. Yeah. Life now versus nineteen ninety five. What's your what's your what's your view on it? What's the differences? Let's let's talk about what you're doing now and then we'll we'll venture back into what now what, is like probably now is probably like the, the starkest contradiction to then. Yeah. Because yeah. now the routine is on. Um, you get up at like <clears throat> 7 a.m. and <clears throat> I'm, we're getting my son dressed for school. Yeah. Yeah, dad, and you know, shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you. You're, you're a dad. Yeah. Yeah. That's some crazy shit. Yeah, so that, I, it, it is, but it, it's the craziest good shit ever. So yeah. It's like, you know, now it's like suddenly you're get, you getting the kids dressed for school and then. Either me and my wife is taking them to the bus. And yeah. then from there, you, you get the next one dressed for school and taking him to the bus. Real routine. Yeah, man. It's like the end of fucking Goodfellas. A, a, yeah. Fucking and Henry Hill speech. That, I, I mean, yes and no. Yeah. And then. <laughs> the Henry Hill speech. It's like, uh, it's like, um, it's like now it's just egg noodles and ketchup. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. type of shit. It's, it's a little bit of that at yeah. times. But then it's also like. 
Um, I have a company that I've been running now for eight years. Yeah. And Successful yeah. fucking company too. We're okay. Yeah, thank God. Yeah, that's yeah. the modest bullshit. That's yeah. it. That's the bullshit. Yeah, he's still he, evil, like, it's crazy that. because like when he was here, I asked, him, I asked him about the fucking record. I asked him, he's like, hey, you know, he did a, you know, it was a thousand spins. You know, Get the fuck out of here. It's a fucking success. Nah, you know, he's doing well. <laughs> well, he's fucking doing well. <laughs> I guess this is how you look at it, like mm -hmm. the way I look at it. Mm -hmm. But you know what it is. The way I look mm -hmm. at this is: Are you with you? <coughs> are you where you see yourself? On? Yeah. Yeah. So to me, I look at it like you're okay. Right, right, right. You know. But then, in in looking in the outside, no, in the whole sense, if we look at it, you, you're 100 percent right. Yes, it's, it's it's cool to say it's successful. So. My next thing after we get them off and then way to school is phone calls, uh, business, the business, business, yeah. business. Yeah. I, I, like you said, it's a stark contrast from, and again, we'll, we'll, we're going to rewind in a second, but like it's a stark contrast from what, what your, what your previous life was. And it's, I don't want to say yeah. previous life because it's like, it's the same fucking life. It's weird how we look back and we say previous fucking life, yeah. like a nigga died and came the fuck back yeah. as another nigga and started a whole nother life. But no, but it, 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 it sort of, it, it, it sort of, it sort of is that way in a sense because it's like, it, it's, it, it's a, it's a, a, a direct con, not, not so much a contradiction for lack of a better word, but sure. it's just not anything like, like it, like it, like was. it was. You like know what I mean? So it's kind of like that was this. This was right. this is this, and that's what it is, and it's cool. Now, a couple of weeks ago, not if I got a couple, of, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was November second, right? November second was the 18th anniversary of the Vendetta album. Was it November second? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a couple of weeks. Ago. Yeah. Was it no November fourth? Oh, no, November fourth. Our right. right. November fourth. Right. 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 Was the was the albums, was the uh, yeah these albums marked out yeah the eighteenth anniversary is eighteen fucking years like eighteen's a that's a fucking child worth the fucking time like a, an adult is eighteen years so you like yeah, a fucking so person they, became they, an adult in the amount of time that some of from the time you dropped that that album the, until now some of those same babies that were born when you dropped that album is the niggas making music now fucking grown ups. Yeah. Wearing long t-shirts, like night gowns and shit. It and is. It's just to give you a, just listen to this, listen to this fucking how you, line. How do you feel about that? What that, that? Nowadays. Well, yeah. like, now, how do you feel about now? How do you feel about rap now? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I kind of, I think I wish the things now more, with more of a pragmatic, matic lens, so to speak. So I look at mm. it now is, there's a side of me that will look at it and automatically you see the differences, right? Because that's what people do. If, if it's something that, in a general sense, you're familiar with it, but then you look at it, you're going to automatically look for those things you approved of and those mm -hmm. things you, you didn't approve of and going to stick out. So you'll see it from that sense in, 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 in one way. But then in another way, I'll look at it and I'll be like, God, it, it ain't no different than when my ever came in after another era was moving out. Like that's the force of time. That's what happens. That's what that's what, you you understand what I'm saying? Right. So it's like the it's like it, the, if I guess overall I would say it, it's definitely not the same. It's like the Michael Jordan era coming right after the Julius I, Irving I, I era. I don't agree with that. And then no, no, Well no, that's how the think about this. Our 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 parents watched Julius Irving. And then Michael came out, and they were like, ah, Michael will never be Julius Irving, but then Michael became fucking Michael. Just yeah. like we're watching Michael now, we're saying, oh, oh, whoever, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like that, that type of philosophy. I, I guess in, in a way, he, he has a point, because it's kind of like I look at it in one breath, and I'll be like, all right, well, when we came out, it was, it was this, this, and this, and, and it, this that they doing now would never... Have flown back. Have up. flown back. Up. And that's one side. But then the other side of it is, yeah, all right, but the same then. So it's not up to them to hold up to a standard of then. Right, right. You understand what I'm saying? Like, the, they're here to do it, what they do the way they do what they do. Right. The same way when we came in, the generation before us was like, well, throw your guns. Like, 
niggas is crazy. Bro. Right, right. But that's what <laughs> what you took know, off. Yeah, that's what took off. Yeah. Or they might have been like, um, uh, I, I don't anything, know, any, anything, anything that was right, out at, at that, that time, time. like that, that that they might not have understood. To them, it might have seemed foreign, and to them, it may have seen as it may have been seen as well. You're you're ruining what hip hop right. what, what was pre because right. that's the always song. the argument when people ask you that they're like yo do you do you approve of what what's now or do you not approve of what's now well think about this too at that time like, yeah, but the I mean, street I think, edge was what was in like I, at no, that time, I mean, no, let's talk this in I think when when our generation of rap well, the, the, that era that or oh, oh, let's go going y'all more graced. By like the transition, like the transition was more embraced than now. Like nowadays, you ask a lot of like the 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 the, the last of the golden era. What do y'all think about hip hop? And nobody really wants to answer the question straight on. Nobody will say I don't like it because they you respect the fact that yo it's gonna change it. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. But I think y'all were more embraced as that transition happened when y'all changed the game because it was versus like how it's changing now. Like hip hop, yeah. Like this, I mean, but then, then again, you gotta, you gotta keep it in. The, and again, this is only the way that I can only speak for the way I, I view things. I can't speak for how everybody else views it or should view it or whatever. And the way I see it is, we came in and our era was like our era was like something that it won't happen again. No, right. Like it, it, it was just, it was just one of those times where everything was in line so, so perfectly, and everything called for so much of a new way mm -hmm. that whoever dropped at that time, that was, I guess, worthy of, of, of you know, of. Of being a part of that, like whoever dropped at that time, they 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 added to something that when you put it all together, when you when you look at the entire tapestry of it, you would never be able to construct that painting, that picture, that 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 building, that whatever whatever it is, you would never be able to make it again. Right. And if you asked how it was made, no one would ever be able to explain it to you. That, that just, to me, is what that ever was. That was, you know what it was? A lot of it, you know, it was creative. It was, it was a creative time. It was creative, it was productive. It was, it was, it was edgy. Forward thinking, it was, it was revolutionary, it was groundbreaking, it was game altering, it was game changing, it was all of these things, and it was prospering. Mm -hmm. And that did it. It was all of these things at one time in one place. And that's rare. That's like somebody going to a fucking gas station and playing a lot of them. They fuck around and hit the money. Just on the home. They went in and take a piss. They was like, all right, fuck right. it, I'll take a ticket. That's the lottery when it was like, yo, I don't play lotto. I just, I yeah. stopped for gas and played it. Took a piss, yeah. I went inside, I had to get the key. Meanwhile, keys. somebody else spent like $40 trying to hit that. Yeah, that ticket. Ticket. Nigga needed changes and shit right. like that. He was like, all right, yeah, just right. give me a fucking just ticket. Just give me a ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he fucks around and wins like 40 <laughs> mil. 40 mil. You understand what I'm saying? So, and, and honestly, but I think that's the perfect analogy for that ever. This era, it's completely different because this is the aftermath of all the good and all the bad that came from that. Ah, but what's happening with this uh, era is now kind of deep. Like, people, are, people, what's deep. happening? It was happening right now. Is like back then, there really wasn't a precedence. If you understand what I'm saying, like there was no See, real precedence. I, I know, but as far as no, no as far as no, what was, was it, he's. He, you're as right. far as yeah, what was being right. established, there, was, there wasn't a precedence. That was the beauty of it all because back you then, what you wanted, it, it was hot and going. Yeah, as long as as long as it was something that you could pull from it, right? Or as long as it was something that when you looked in the mirror, there was a piece of you that was that. Then that was all that had. Think been. about this. Think about this. Just to give you an idea of the of the. Of the project and just going back to the 18 year anniversary because I have to the Vendetta album. Listen to the producers that you worked with, and this 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 will give you the the 
the philosophy behind it. You worked with Buck Wild at that time. Mm. Worked with Havoc. Yeah. Havoc of, of Mob Deep Fame quite naturally have with his shit. Shout out to Hav. Worked with Molly Maul. Yeah. At that time, which is one of my favorite joints on there. Um, Pete Rock, who was very, very, at that time, was, you know what I'm saying? Pete Rock really Wait, was changing is, the game at that boy, time. Is this killing you? You know what I'm saying? No, I'm good. I'll be okay. I'm, Look, the, the, Dope Boy's about to Here goes the health yeah. shit. Now they starting yeah. this healthy Howard shit. I'm yeah. going to be okay, man. Y'all niggas is burning. We ain't burning for the sake. Shit. This is the first time <laughs> that niggas said <laughs> <have. laughs> that nigga out of shape. <laughs> get him 12. Get him, get him a slice of cheddar. So he's going to along. They're going to fuck with me all night. This is what it is. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is. This isn't new, nigga. I'm used to this shit. Dope boy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, you don't want to see a dead body? My nigga, dope no boy. <laughs> Yo, then, then you had you had Diddy. Yeah. Speaking of with that Diddy shit, look, just I asked about doing a Diddy project. What? First of all, how did that project come about? Diddy. What the like the the, the, the nothing move but the money record, which was like a really really big fucking record. I like I like that record a lot. Like that was than, like it was not more than, than how did you connect with him? Like what was the first connection with him to make that project come? Did y'all see Kim out? Did he see you out? How did that project come come into play? Nah, we were just like with Bad Boy. I was just always cool. Like um, I was just always cool with them. Like. And I'm trying to remember when, like, you know how you so cool with somebody, you can't even remember how you met them or where you right. met them. It, it was one of those things. So it was like, then um, just one day the, the project came. What I first remember was the no, the, the, I first remember like the the flavor in your ear, the remix video, going to that shit, mm -hmm. and it was over because, like back then, I would never know what we was going to do. Like, Irv would always be like, yo, today we going in? I'll be like, oh, word, oh, okay, I guess we going in. Right. We just go, and it was one of those things where he's like, yo, we going to such and such. So we went, and they was done cool. And I think the first person I got real cool with off the rip was, um, was Hawk, Hawk Pierre. Mm -hmm. And Hawk was from Queens, so we automatically clicked, and then I met, like, D-Dot and all that. Like, and we was all good, and I remember, um, like we early on we was doing shows, and Big would always be on the same bill, so that's how we got cool. So I guess all of that transferred over to, yo, y'all should come to the video. And then when we went to the video that day, that was like, it was a cool experience the whole day, like just shooting the, the video and the flavor, yeah, yeah. yeah. That shit, we, we had fun the whole day. That was that was big. That yeah. was that was Craig, that was LL. Big Craig. Oh, L, I don't think I was there when L was there, but um, just with the with the bad boy team. Sure, was sure. Home, it was a good day. It was and last Boy Scout nigga was there. Yeah, on the record. Rampage, Rampage on the record. record and fucking um. Yeah, so long story short, it was just a matter of who I wanted to work with, and, right. and they were cool. They were like family to me. So, so I I just wanted to, you know, Puff work. wanted to work with me. I wanted to work with them, and it was not a more. It was a good collaboration, and it was it was like and it was a polished record. Right. Mm -hmm. like and but he didn't even record. want me to do that beat. That was not at all the record he wanted. Me Why? To what was there? What was that? Uh, when I got up there, um. Where'd you record that? At Bad Boy. You did that one at Bad Boy? Yeah, right? we did it at Bad Boy. We did it at, at they studio. Mm -hmm. But fucking, um... Paul didn't want that, that track? He didn't even pick that track for me. That was for LL. That, that beat was really? for LL. Really? Yeah. And he was playing beats, and he played me a beat that he heard me on. And he was like, um... It was a real, like, um... Like, to me, I could hear Black Rock and got you. Or I, I could hear me doing it, but it wasn't where my head was at. And then he played the the nothing move beat, and that 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 just, it got you going. He was like, "All right, I'm in." Yeah, and he, I was like, "Yo, who who's that for?" And he's like, "Oh, this this for LL." And then he played like two more, and I was like, "Yo, go back to the LL shit." And he, he was kind of like shocked. He was like, "What?" And I was like, "Yeah, I like that shit." And he was like. Like I could see in his face, he's like, I would have never expected expected you to like that. Well, you had like a lot of like 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 that was a complete departure 
from what well, you had been recording prior. Right. Yeah, like you go <laughs> street, you know what I'm saying? You go from shit real. I, I wasn't mad at that because that oh was what was going on at the time. Like yeah. that beat, it couldn't hurt him because like like you just said, like you could make that record at that time based off of who you are that's going to go. Like it's going to mm -hmm. go because you're Mike and that's the sound of that time. You know what I'm saying? Nas, come on. Nas made, hit me now. Like shit I, like I, that. I, and, and we didn't, like I know with me, I, anything that we I ever did, I never looked at it. In the sense of will will it will, will it get fit into right, well, everyone else? You made it because it felt right. I just made it because that's what you that's what made. I felt. Right. That's what I yeah. wanted to do. And if I heard it and I liked it, I just would be like, "All right, what's wrong with the record?" I just yeah, like what's wrong with the record? any record I did. But I guess that was part of my my own. I would say my my naivety. Mm. Or my my naivete is being an artist, like <laughs> that I had. Like, yeah. Well, well it, again, that wasn't like you got to think. Like you was kind of thrust into that shit coming from a street scenario. Like that wasn't no, and I don't don't you know what I'm saying? Like I don't ever yeah. mind that that's how yeah. I am, was, and will be as a person, as an artist, as a creator. Like. I don't at all mind the fact of, like I was never, when it came to music, I never had any boundary. I would listen to any genre of music from like being a kid. So I was the weirdo growing up. I was the kid who was like, fuck you, have a Van Halen shirt on for. And you know, <laughs> that shit. And you live in the hood. Like I was that kid, you understand what I'm saying? So with music, I never had any boundary as to what I allowed myself to listen to. And as long as I could get something from it and I could enjoy it, I would go with it. So I guess that filtered into how you make the records you make. And with any record I did, I never looked at no record I did like, yo, this is going to get me more spins or this is going to be made for this crowd or now I need the record that where I'm doing this, like that was always somebody around me telling you, telling me, like, like oh, this okay, your now you need this, now you need this. You was never really with it, right? And I would either be with it or wouldn't be with it. You know what I mean? If you had to pick your favorite record, your favorite outside looking at your favorite Mike Geronimo record, what would you pick? I think I know the answer to this, which is crazy. Mm. You know the answer? I think I do. I think I would say, I probably out of all of them, I would say Master I see. I swear, I was, I was going to say that. I was going to say my second one was going to be Shit's Real. I would say Master I see. Shit's Real, actually, I would I would never have picked that one. Really? Yeah. Really. I would have thought that would have been the second one. But Master I see was going to be hands down, probably, because like, that's my favorite record. So I was just hoping that that was the shit, too. I, and the only reason I say that is because Shit's Real was something that was placed in front of me. Right. You not, didn't really select that right No, not at all did I select it. Like But it turned out to be fucking one of the hottest classics. But that's why I say like whatever sometimes what's meant to be is meant to be. Like I never like Shit's Real was something that Irv and my man Chucky Madness did. And I remember Chucky. Yeah, I remember Chucky. Chuck, oh shit. Yeah. And, and actually Chuck That was all there too. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck had a, a considerable yeah. part to do with that record because Chuck I didn't one. know that Chuck did that record though. Yeah. yeah. And that 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 was a, that was I mean it it may not have publicly been defined as the collaboration that but he was, that it should have been sure, defined. Sure, 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 sure. But Chuck had a lot to do with that. Chuck, Chuck was a cool ass nigga. Chuck, shout out I mean, to Chuck. Chuck well, I mean, Chuck said. Well, well, Chuck, yeah, the dumb shout out to Chuck, man. Yeah. Chuck actually is the person who cultivated me into being on stage and rhyming. Like, and Chuck is a laid back nigga. Yeah. Like, Chuck is laid yeah. back. And that's good well, because I met Chuck in high school because yeah. we both went to Bayside High School. So, and Chuck was like, I think two grades above me, yeah. and he just would, was cool with me. Where he would like look after me, and then yeah. he found out I spit, and then I started going to his crib because at that time Chuck was literally like he was a big DJ in Queens. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he was in Queens, like when mixtapes were popping, he was like one of those. He was the guy. So he, I would go to his crib. 
And that's how I met Sage and and like DJ everybody at DJ Sage yeah. and the rest of them. And come on, be wise and and and, and Corey and, and um that's how I met them dudes. And Chuck was the one that first had me spitting like to a beat. Like before before that, it was just me just freestyling in, the, in the lobby. Yeah, in the lobby. Wow, you know what I mean? So that was the link between me and, and God. And like right. Irv knew Chuck. Right. Um that's how I met Irv through Chucky e. Man. Okay. Because like the 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 Liverpool joint we did. That right. That was when I first came home. That was that was shit. Yeah. And I didn't even know we what we were gonna do that night. He was just like, yo. You gonna perform our song that we be recording in the crib, and I was like, "For real?" And fucking Cheeks was the host of that shit yeah. at the time. I remember that at shit. That I just came home too. And it's like, yo, it's like, yo, go to this shit. The fucking girls from the schools, like, yo, we gonna go to this shit in Jamaica. Blah blah. blah. Shout was like, yo, we going to this shit. So I'm going to shout one of this shit. I'm chilling, told me different fuck bitches and shit like that. Yeah. I turn around, this nigga's on stage rocking. I'm like. The fuck? Yeah, I like, fucking yeah, play. I like yeah, yo. I, mean, I swear to God. I was like, yo, I came off the stage. This nigga was like, the nigga was talking. I'm standing talking to the nigga. I turn around, start talking to to shout the nigga. I turn back around. Yeah. The nigga's on stage rocking. I said, oh yeah, shit, like, this shit's happening. Son, that was all yeah. spontaneous shit. Like that was all Chuck just telling me. Like he was killing that shit too. I was like, oh shit. I, and I remember because. I remember before I went on, like, that, that, that shit was crazy. They was throwing records to the niggas. They was throwing bottles. Shit was niggas. crazy. It was whack. Like, they was... They had the they DJ was, contest shit, too. Well, at the, all that shit. After that shit, the whole shit. They and records, it was like... All, it was wilding, son. That shit was like crazy. All the South Side. And Everything, son. That shit was like some real South street side. shit. It was Murdoch. It was nobody like, got searched. I know for a fact. I had a burner. I had a burner. That's all I was thinking. They ain't searched they nobody to get in there, son. We walked in there straight up and down with pistols. Like, young niggas. That's I crazy. just came home, I already got a gun. Like, that's what I was there. thinking. I was like, there's so many niggas in here that this is a crazy mixture of people. Crazy. And I remember watching niggas running. And if you was whack, niggas was throwing shit. Wet, they was stoning. Some got up there and lit the shit, I swear. On that out. Lit the shit up. Nobody was hot. Niggas was rocking off that shit. Niggas was jumping. I was like, yo, this shit is crazy. All I was I like, yo. Is no one threw anything. That's like all I was saying in my head. I was like, all right, you must have did okay because nobody threw no shit. No one threw anything at you. <laughs> they, I'm going to tell you how bootleg this shit was. They had a little corner, and I know you remember this shit, where they sold little canned sodas and fucking boiled hot dogs on the side. They had the little shit right on the side of that shit because I remember the nigga shot was like, yo, son, I'm hungry. We had just, and I don't even smoke. This is back then. This is how long ago this shit was. Mm. I had smoked. The nigga shot was like, yo, so I'm starving. And we bought two little boiled ass fucking Franks wow. and a fucking orange soda, canned sodas or whatever. I'm standing there talking to this girl. I'll never forget this yeah. girl named Crystal and yeah. them from Jamaica. It, it was uh, It was some real hood bullshit, it son. Was rough. It yeah. was rough, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That, that, was, that was the platform. Though. That was the springboard. And that was the springboard. After that, it was over. It was yeah, over. And that, it was over. Was, it was yeah. off. But honestly, put between Chuck and 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 a, and a, at the same time between Chuck and Lodge. Yeah. Because when I wasn't in Hollis or, or Southside, I was where she was from in yeah. Flushing. And when I was in Flushing, I was at Lodge Crib. So between those two people, and Van had a lot to do with it. Yeah. You know, so between really being with around Chuck who who introduced Irv and being around Lodge and Van who, you know, they would put me on to where all this music was coming from. You know what I mean? So that kind of cultivated. You know, like Lodge would be like, yo, that's the skull snaps, or that's the meters, or mm -hmm. or that's the blackbirds, or Donald Bird. He was, yeah, or that's Donald Bird, or he was showing me where the music was coming from, and at Lodge Prep, anyone would come by at any given minute. So, I didn't realize how Lodge Lodge was. <laughs> like, like it was weird. Lodge is very influential to a lot of niggas' contributors. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. crazy He's a major contributor. To I mean, I know now, but like originally, like I didn't recognize it first coming home. I'm like, yo, I heard the the uh, the, the looking at the front door record, and I was like, yo, that shit is a 
restaurant. I love this shit. This shit is dope. But what's so ill is the first person literally that my mother like would be like, all right, if that person's outside, you can be outside was love. Right. So the first person I ever met in my life coming out of my apartment was Paul. Was Paul. He was lost. Mm -hmm. Like so he been like an older brother to me from the day. From the beginning. Right. right. But it's just so weird because now if I look at it all, it's like it's bug because that while that that was just something that I was around and soaked up. And right. and, and, and and it's crazy how it just all ended up being what it ended up being. It culminated. Yeah, because I, it, like I said, I, I never, I didn't aim to do any of that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? Like, I, I wasn't. You was never comfortable in that shit either. Like, no. which is weird to look at, like, to look back on it, to be in that position, you know, making the music, enjoying the music, enjoying, like, I think you enjoyed the, 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 creative side of it more than you enjoyed the public side of it, which is what I saw. You know what I'm saying? Like knowing you and being around you and like I'll give you an example. Like I could recall times when you would be like we'd be outside or whatever, you come back from recording or whatever, you jump out of grand car and come upstairs and play fucking video games with me. And be more comfortable in the house playing a video game <laughs> than being outside. Like my sister would bring her friends up and they peek into the fucking movie like, yo, he's got he's got Mike Ronald with it. We close the fucking door and play Fucking, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My sister be like, yo, she won't bring her friends in for autographs. We playing a fucking video game. Yeah, and, I, and that was really what she was more comfortable with, like I, you know, yeah, like absolutely. And, and, and it's bugged, I guess, because like I've always like been that way. Like I, I'm always, I was all like I is, I always was more comfortable where I was comfortable. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And. and I'm so high, you so high. I'll be getting money till the day that I die. I'm so high, you so high. I'll be getting money till the day that I die. Behold the uncontrollable, I keep the whole world in drama. Smoke my competition out and just.